What are the ingredients of a title for an Amazon listing? My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I'm gonna break down Amazon titles and explain like what I put into them to make them perform the best. So first off, let's look at an actual Amazon listing and title. This is one of my newest sellers. I got this as high as the top 2000 BSR in all of home goods. I'm actually really struggling to keep this in stock right now and the inventory at FBA is checking in so freaking slowly, it's super frustrating. We've all been there. In any case, I feel like this title is one of my best and we did a really good job with this and there's a, a variety of tools when I'll explain like why we came about doing this. We also added this eye patch because we figured everybody and their dogs was gonna copy and mimic our, our design. So we were like, what can we do to just add a little bit more value? Um, so we kind of threw that in there. It's kind of a little cursory, cool side note. So let's break down what's going into a title. First off, in most categories, they do mandate you include the brand name at the very front of the title. Now, for most new brands without brand identity, I actually discourage this. Try and get away with not including your brand name in the title on new items, new launches, unless you have a well-established million dollar brand that everybody is searching for and there's actual search volume behind it. Because otherwise, it's a waste of space you're hurting your keyword chances. I also don't really believe Amazon is a brand building platform. Uh, consumers, you, you and, and you can test this yourself. If you looked at the last 100 people that bought, actually just quiz 100 of your friends. Let's just do it this way. Talk to 100 of your friends and ask them, what was the last item you bought on Amazon? And then they'll be like, I bought a tumbler from you know, Megapint, or I bought socks, or I bought a jacket, or I bought these really cool uh, Aftershock headphones, whatever. And then the next uh, question asks them, what was the name of the brand you purchased from? Well, in the case of the Tumblr, there's like a zero out of 100 chance that they're going to name the brand correctly. Um, maybe they'll understand if they're purchasing from the same brand repeatedly, they might have some brand identity. But by and large, I'm going to put the percentage between three and 5% for an average Joe category that they're gonna remember the brand name. So brand name, not important, especially if you'd made the mistake of trademarking a very lengthy brand name, even more so that I don't think it should go at the front of the title. If you're gonna do it, um, I would put it at the back, personally. So that's where I would put it is like buy at the end. So that's first brand name, done there, done that. By the way, if you click on a brand name and you don't have your brand store built and it doesn't go to a brand store like this, huge mistake. Because the last thing you want is somebody to click on your brand name and it goes to competitor listings and ads on the detail pages. That would be no good, no bueno whatsoever. All right, so hit the brand name home. Next is the next four or five words really need to describe your product. Imagine that nobody was gonna read anything except these four or five words. What would you want them to know? Well, in my case, Megapint Cup is exactly what I want somebody to know. Right, we got the Johnny Depp trial that's just, oh my gosh, what a zoo. Let's go with that. And and so, oh my gosh, we want somebody to know this because this is what they're searching for, right? Or at least that's what we think they're going to be searching for when they're trying to buy this particular item. So if you go over to Amazon right now, I do rank number one for Megapint, which is cool. Um, so the other, the next part is a little bit more descriptive of a feature. So we have 12 ounce stainless steel. Now, Nobody in their dogs is going onto Amazon and typing 12 ounce at. So this is probably the weakest part of our title in terms of where it should be location wise. We should probably push this down to the bottom personally. But the reason we have it at the front on this particular item is because if we call the item Megapint, but it's only 12 ounces, is there a little bit of a disconnect between the consumer? And absolutely there is. This is also why we launched the 30 ounce right there. Um, so it's not really mega technically. So that's why we put it at the front. But in general, I think sizing information should go at the very end as a variation um, to show it at the very end. So stainless steel wine and beer tumbler, though, this is probably important um, because it is feature focused. Now, not a lot of people are searching the keywords behind stainless steel wine and beer tumbler. So we're, we're choosing to put some non-impression related keywords uh, at the front of this to basically just set the tone for the features. Now, everything from um, here on after is very keyword heavy. So double wall insulated tumbler maybe could be argued as another feature benefit, um, but is also very focused on keywords. The word lid, there's a feature, but at the very end, this is straight up keyword stuffing, 
right? And a lot of people are wondering like, is it okay to keyword stuff? And I 100% believe you 100% should stuff as many keywords as you possibly can while making it germane to the consumer as much as possible, but absolutely going over the top and stuffing it in there. So trial merchandise, right? That's a weird one. Johnny Depp mug for Captain Jack Sparrow fans. Now this is 100% over the top keyword stuffing because when we looked at the, the keyword data and we're gonna actually go in and pull this up on a listing here. So here is the Cerebra report out of Helium 10 here. We got 1,200 sponsored keywords, 837 are organic. This is, I think about six weeks old as a listing. Um, so it's in its infancy and I usually like to shoot for 1,000 keywords by day 30. So I'm a little behind on the organic traction but I'm still like barely keeping this thing in stock. So like I, I'm, I'm good from an order standpoint. I don't really care about the organic as long as I'm getting the orders. But when we look at the data here, on the right, you've got a little bit of a word cloud. And most of the time, I think we generally want word cloud words inside of the title. But there are many keywords here that are just a little unusual, right? Like Johnny Depp Cup, I'm ranked number one for that, 900 search volume. Mega Pint Johnny Depp, 377. Right? And we're going to probably see keywords like Megapint probably fall off here as the trend kind of dies down. But there's still 4,600, 4,400 Megapint consumers impressions per month, according to this. Look at the keyword data. It's actually going up. So if you look at the impression data, um, the June 4th iteration, 4,400 search volume there. So it's on the way up, 78% up. So the longer the uh, trial went on, the longer it's going up. And, and so I'm in organic rank two, right? So like these are things that are great. This is going well for me. But when we initially redid the title um, about three or four days ago, we actually didn't have Jack Sparrow inside of the title. And this was a mistake. So the reason we identified this and figured this out is we looked at the search query performance report, which is a great way to understand how to redo your title. So here is the search query performance report. I'll put a link to this in the description. And in here, you can see all of the total search volume. So like mega, these are actual search volume query report numbers. This will be different from the Helium 10. So Megapine at 10,000 search volume. This is my number one opportunity. Here you can see the impression counts and all that good stuff. And I'm getting 4.4% of the brand share for Megapint on this item as of last week, which is awesome, right? And as we go through the marketing funnel here, as the funnel goes, it starts with impressions at the top, then it goes clicks, then it goes add to carts, and then finally purchases. If your percentage is going up, the farther down you go in the funnel, this says that you can build more traffic. That means your conversion rate is superior to your competitors, which means send more traffic. So as we go through this, I've got 4.4% of the impression share. When we get the clicks, I'm at 5.8%. But then when we get to add to cart 7.79, so that means I'm going way up on conversion rate, dip a little bit down at the end there with the actual purchases at 7.56. I'd call that basically static, which is great. But when we look around here and we see some things, what wasn't on my radar, and I cannot believe we missed this, we didn't have the word Jack Sparrow on the listing anywhere. And so we're now at 2.2% of the brand share here, which is great. So we went in and added Jack Sparrow fans in there to try and get some connection. We also added the iPad just a couple days ago. And so I don't even remember what I had on my title. I just deleted it out and put in pirate eye patch because it's very on brand for this item uh, and may help us rank for new keywords. So I got the pirate eye patch idea just kind of on, on my own, had nothing to do with keyword data, was just looking for a feature add on. So, so here's the Helium 10 data, which gives you some indications of what you're ranking for. You could also use this from your competitors to come up with an initial keyword list. But as your listing matures, the way that you're gonna update your titles by looking at the search queries here and then figuring out like, hey, what do I want to rank better for, right? So Johnny Depp, Megapint, if we take Amazon, Amber Turd, you guys see that there? Oh my gosh. Um, do we have the word Amber on the listing? Oh my goodness, we don't. Uh, so let's go back to the search query performance report. So what is that search volume? Um, 2,200. Can you believe that? Oh my goodness. So we need to get Amber on the list here. So let's look at the, so we have 15% of all add to carts for Amber turd. Jeez Louise. What, what's happening society guys? Let's take a look at this and see. So <laughs> I missed this one. It was the dog. Then there's our listing right there at rank four. 
Um, wow. Just, just wow. I'm just, I literally, this is not on my radar, guys. Here was one of the biggest words that we added, and it was actually Captain Jack Sparrow. 66,000 search volume here, and that's a huge number. We already have about 0.79% of the impression share, but we'd go down the, the funnel here, 3.4% of the actual add to carts. So that was another reason why we put it into the title here. So I've really hit this example home, uh, sh very much in depth show showcasing like how we built this one. There are other titles I'd like to show you as well. Um, so here's an example where we didn't put the brand name in the front because it's a kind of a generic gift item. Nobody really cares who sells it. Fabulous birthday box. Female self-care basket for women, handmade soap, bath bomb, body lotion, tumbler set, spa basket idea, unique new bath kit for sister, mother, daughter, grandma, niece. In the gift category, most of the gift category is chock full of targeted keywords. That is demographically targeted keywords for her, for him, daughter, son, you name it. And so that's why when you see gift items on Amazon, you're going to see chock full keyword stuffing demographic targeting titles. This is normal. This happens all the time. And it's because of that. Uh, now, at times, the word gift or the word present can cause title suppressions. And you'll see that as well. Also, small, small call out. You'll see here I've got a local business tag here. If you want to get your local business tag, watch this video next uh, about how to get that. Um, all right. So... When we build this out, it's who's it for, what keywords, what's the feature items. A little bit easier to build a title for a kit because there's so much to talk about and to unpack inside of the product. But there's kind of an example of another one. Here's a second example of another kit. We change the title of this one all the time. When it's Mother's Day, we put Mother's Day language inside of the title in the front end. Um, but now we're just kind of going focus on the relaxation, self-care and mom angle and stuff like that. Um, here is an unusual title. So this is an item um, before my mega pint success. This was my number one item uh, of all time. I actually organically ranked this for number one for the term wine glass. And it's now banned from ads. But when it was at its heyday, it was in the top 10 of all wine glasses on Amazon. Organically ranked number one for the term wine glass in, in its best week ever. Um, and so we had a really short title and through AB testing, we found that we made more money with a short title on a high velocity unit. So as your item progresses, you may pull things back out of your title for conversion purposes. So something really basic, I'm not drinking alone. I'm social distancing, funny wine glass did really well. Now we're actually going to start stuffing words back into this title to see if we can resurrect this listing because even though it has 1,100 reviews, the velocity count of this particular unit, also we're way, way past the social fat of it, um, it it's, just, it's just on its last leg. I'm just trying to get rid of my inventory essentially, right? And so we're going to go back to treating it like a launch product and redo the title and look at the keyword rankings. The social distancing wine glass has 2,300 sponsored keywords. 2800 on the organic. If we were going to try and use our own keyword data to figure out like how to expand this, it can be a little tricky because when an item is parented, often the Cerebro data will combine the keywords in it. So generally speaking, if I had a mature listing and I was going to redo the title, I'd go to organic rank 20 through 50 like this and then filter in and look at these keywords. But things like Jesus Juice Wine Glass has nothing to do with this glass. I can wine all I want, I'm, I'm retired, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so these are phrases that make it very difficult to redo the title. So uh, what we can do is go onto Amazon and go type in something along the lines of social distancing wine glass, try and find a competitor's item that is not, and there you go, I've got number one for that actual phrase right there. But if I go to a competitor's item that's doing okay, right, and I'm, I'm ranked 43,000 on the BSR, it's respectable, but it's not going to make me a buck. Um, if we were trying to find somebody else's well-ranked product to see, like, what are the keywords that I should be focused on, you'd go and look at the BSR and, and see what shows up. Um, and, and look, look, they blurred out the word drinking on that one to see if they could get it to allow ads. Obviously, it doesn't work, unfortunately. Um, all right. So I don't really see any like major takeaways when I'm looking at this data here and you're looking at me evaluate this in real time. Um, but I think this one right here is probably the closest. It's in the top hundred thousand. Um, they've got husband and wife parented though, which is kind of like, ugh, gosh, dang it. 
right? I wanted to get a single isolated glass that didn't have a parentage on it, but we'll try it out and see what shows up, right? So if we go here, get keywords and just see what shows, uh, maybe we'll get an idea of like where we could go with this product title to see if we can generate some content. And unfortunately, here we go. We can see like all the other data that shows up. Doesn't really help me. Social enjoyment, wine, saying wine, social. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to type in um, maybe on the old, we'll go back to my product and we'll just type in the word social just to see what shows up. So we're going to get rid of the filter, show filter. We're going to delete the 20 through 50 and we're going to include phrases that contain social just to see what shows up. So 30 keywords here, we're going to expand this to take a look at it. Social distancing wine glass. We got that one. The word can though, not on my radar at this time. So that's kind of surprising. Um, here you can see the social trend. I'm curious to see like how this trend did over time in, in March of, of 2022 was at its peak, believe it or not. Uh, it doesn't feel like that from a sales velocity standpoint, but there you have it. So in here overall search for, I'm pretty much on the low side in general, um, social enjoyments, wine, social distancing gifts, all that's right here. I'm not a social butterfly. So if we're going to try and redo this title, it's a very difficult one to do. I'd put, put this at the, probably an 8.5 out of 10 on difficulty level. Um, there's nothing really obvious of what to chase and what to go do, not from the word social. So I'm kind of coming up a little uh, blank on this one. So when in doubt, keep doing the research. So here I've typed in funny wine glass and I picked up this because work one. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Keyword data, of course, Helium 10 is not generated there. So we're going to go over to Cerebro and manually type it in. And we're going to see what they're ranking for because they're the number one organic funny wine glass showing up. 2,600 organic words, no advertisements. This is very, very helpful data and insight. In here, we can then kind of go through and say like, okay, is there anything in here? Wine glass with sayings. Maybe we should sort this by search volume just to get a baseline and then uh, we got gag gifts right there, stemless wine glass, some interesting things. So I, I like the gag gifts. I'm going to write that one down. Um, and let's see what else we can come back with. So birthday gifts for women. Yeah, okay, 378000 on that one. Um, as we scroll down, boss lady gifts. <laughs> That's funny. Coworker leaving, maybe. So there's a lot of generic words in here that kind of work, but kind of don't at the same time for this particular one. I have no idea why this word's even showing up. What is that? Sometimes when I, I get curiosity clicks, so like this is like, what the frick is this? Probably a brand name, I'm guessing. Um, office gifts. Office gifts, probably not a terrible one. So if we're going to do gag gifts, office gifts, uh Maybe boss lady. I don't know how I feel about that at this point. Funny birthday gifts. No gifts for boss. So we're, we're, we're clicking on an item that's, you know, because work. So it's going to have a lot of work focused words. So this is, this gives a little bit of a baseline to figure out like, okay, how do we, how do we improve the title for this? And how do we take it to the next level? So work anniversary, small gifts for coworkers, stuff like that could work. So next step, we're going to go into the vital info of this product and see if we can rework it here. Um, so we've got the funny wine glass. Now we're going to add in uh, gag gifts, office gifts. And I don't know how I feel about boss lady. It's probably a bad fit. So off gag gifts, office gifts. And then we're just going to hunt for a little bit more, see what else we can get. So we're going to go back on Amazon here and type in funny wine glass again and see what else is showing up. So we've got a lot of cussing and other choices available to us. When you type in funny wine glass, wow, you get quite a few random stuff. Um, all right, so we just scroll down. Is there any angles to go with this? Liquid therapy. Yeah, not really. Not a lot of obvious choices. And there's my glass right there. Organic rank about 45 or so for the term funny wine glass, which is kind of where it's been for the last year and a half after it got banned from ads. Um, so here's another option. Let's just see what this one looks like. Funny wine glasses for friends, etched tumbler. So maybe we could throw some of that in there. So funny, uh, funny gifts for friends. All right. So we're going to save that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to track the keyword data to see if the ranks go up. So that's the most important thing. When you think about the elements of a title, 
you're gonna have your brand name, the features and the keywords in it. And then you always wanna rehash and redo the keyword data because over time it's not set it and forget it. You can come back, make changes to the title, maintain your past rankings, but then gain new rankings. It's a very fast way to get new sales in the door, more traffic and whatnot. Uh, we have hundreds of videos about SEO. Check out this masterclass on SEO next. Really great video if you haven't seen that yet. We also have courses over at mag-school.com on SEO. Uh, for 10 bucks, I give you all my trade secrets, as well as a certificate of comp com uh, <laughs> competency, if I could say that word, uh, for, for your troubles. So check that out, mag-school.com.